horribly built bathroom shower combo thing going on here. And um, people that know, that people that are subscribed to me that have followed me through the years know that when I start these videos, I usually start critiquing all of the things that went wrong. I'm not gonna bother doing that on this video because there's so many things. I'm just gonna kind of slowly go through some of these issues. Let you guys come up with your own conclusions. Um, some of you that are more learned than others will know exactly what's going on. Some of you guys won't. So I'm gonna point out some of the obvious. And the reason why I'm gonna point it out and going back on my channel 11 years, um, I started out on YouTube by um, accidentally going on a job that had gone horribly wrong 11 years ago and I started enumerating all the mistakes specifically so that when somebody like that person had some type of knowledge of things that if you're going to have a job done that you can kind of disseminate am I going to get into trouble with this job as well so on any given job, it takes usually about a week to two weeks, sometimes three weeks to complete a job. And during that process, at the end of the day, you should be able to go look at your bathroom, look at some of the things that are going wrong, and then not have those mistakes made so that you're not at a point where you're, you know, 70%, 80%, 90% done, and then everything is bad, and then you've just spent all this money on material and labor for absolutely no reason at all and you don't have a functional shower and so that's kind of the reason why I ended up on YouTube and why I continue to do these um, kind of <laughs> study it's like the tile whisper um, of, of these jobs so that so that the consumer the consumer has some type of an idea of what to look out for at the end of the day that's why I do these videos. So you've already seen, I'm sure, a lot of people are just like screaming at their computer right now. Um, you've already seen a lot of these things that, that I don't even have to mention. And I am gonna mention some of them because I think it's worth mentioning. Um, some of them are obvious, some of them aren't. That's very obvious. You know, having that big gap between the tub and the tile, having those two tile not match up, um, having this big gap below here that you're gonna fill in later, Having that big gap below here that you're going to fill in later with a jagged cut tile. Um, there, there's a lot, a lot of wrong with this. And, and I, I'm at a loss to how you can screw things up so badly when I have so many homeowners that email me pictures of their shower that was built pretty much pristine. And, um... <laughs> and um, having contractors who manage to mess things up left and right and back and forth all the time and I don't know why I don't know why contractors are just so willy-nilly with, um, with doing their tile work um, so to be fair this is a large format tile this is a two foot by four foot tile uh, throughout both on the floor and the shower the floor isn't awful. When I ran my hand across here, there's some slight lippage going on. A um, little bit more over here. Let's see if I can find something to kind of highlight that. Oh, here we go. Yeah, especially at the corners. The corners are always going to give you problems. But both, both left and right, and over here, and over here. So, apparently, oh, look at that. I never even saw that. So, apparently, this guy didn't use um, leveling clips. I think he did. I think the homeowner showed me. Where is it at now? I set it down somewhere. Um, he used a spin doctor, but he gave it up pretty quickly. I don't know where they're at now. Maybe this is one of them? Yeah, that's one of them. No, this is a strap one. So the strap goes inside that, that goes between the tile, that's supposed to go down here and then the strap gets pulled up and then it gets knocked off afterward. So I think he had started out using those and for whatever reason, he had stopped, which was a big mistake. And then he just kind of played it by ear after that. 
I don't know where they went. Anyway, he kind of played it by ear, and that was that was an incorrect way to do that. So as I said, before I so rudely inter interrupted myself, to be fair, I don't like anything to do with a large format tile. Um, they're getting exponentially larger. This is a two foot by four foot. I have seen recently almost a three foot, a 30 inch by 60 inch tile, which is five foot. I'm five foot nine, so it would almost cover my entire body, but I'm not gonna do that type of tile. I'm not gonna do this type of tile. I'm just not gonna do it. It's too difficult, it's too heavy, it's, it's too much work, and I just refuse to go on a job like this. Um, there's an, another issue about cutting this tile. Cutting this tile is very problematic. You're not gonna have a DeWalt saw that's gonna be able to cut this type of tile. You're either gonna have an extra large manual tile cutter to where you can score and snap it and hope for the best that you don't have any kind of chips on that side. You're gonna have a grinder, which is not gonna do an outstanding job because you're not gonna get a completely straight line unless you set up your own little fence on it and then you're still gonna chip possibly the edge of this porcelain tile. Um, or you're gonna have to get one of those elongated saws that actually the motor sets on a rail and the motor and, and the blade itself move across the tile rather than the tile moving across the blade. That would be appropriate, right? This guy should have rented one of those saws, but he didn't. So he ran into a lot of trouble insofar as, uh, these cuts aren't awful, awful. There's, there's a little bit of chips going on on here. And if he had a rubbing stone, he could have rubbed those, those little chips down a little bit. Um, but it's not an outstanding job for a lot of reasons that I don't want to enumerate because as again, you know, I just kind of showed what was going on. And let's see if we can see this. Uh, that's a lot of thin set up under there that I'm not seeing any type of trowel marks. There's no tools here that I can actually physically see to see what kind of trowel he used, but obviously he used a grinder on this tile because it's cut, it's cut, it's cut wavy. Right, and it's cut wrong because you yeah, have a huge gap over here. Um, the homeowner was upset that they didn't set the tile on top of the floor tile as they did over here and they did over here. And then he has to put in all those little pieces and all that stuff, but you know, if he had known, and here's all those little pieces that he's gonna put in. And I guess that there are some other loose pieces and all that stuff, but if he had known anything about building a shower, then he would know that you can take one of these sheets and run it through your wet saw straight like that so you have a straight edge you don't have to do any little pieces even on this head, side you can cut a straight line to where you don't have to do little fill in pieces but he doesn't know he's never built a shower and i know he's never built a shower because there's a lot of wrong going on here part of part of that is this schluter strip he did manage to have a slight slope going on the top of here but it doesn't match up to the strip. So now we have some lippage going on. Um, plus a lot of this strip, uh, where's that level? A lot of this strip is outside of where the tile is at, meaning that I'm sitting on the strip right here and not the tile. Now I'm at the tile, but <laughs> there's my lippage. You know, it's just, it's, it's it, you know, it's just a kind of a hodgepodge of different stuff. But I knew when I came in here that he doesn't know how to build a shower. I was standing right here. I was standing right here and I knew that he didn't know how to build a shower because I'm looking right at that shower valve. Which I did not know he did not anchor, but, because he didn't anchor it. Right? Wrong in a lot of ways. But this mud guard is about uh, three quarters to about an inch thick. So the outside of this mud guard is where your finished wall should be. The inside of that inch, three quarters or inch or so would be your finished surface minimum. And this is your maximum. And he's way outside of his maximum. And so any tile guy knows that. Plus he's, he's, in, <laughs> he's, he's incorporated his mud guard into the, I don't know how they're gonna get the scutcheon thing on, you know, like I don't know, you know. The screws hopefully are long enough to, yeah, I don't know. 
it's messed up. And then he used all kinds of different tools. It looks like he used a grinder to try and cut around this and was very unsuccessful. Um, I don't know why he stopped prior to the shower head. No idea. Uh, Should have gone up because this is like half a tile. And why not just go up one more tile? We don't have, this is a vaulted ceiling. So it's like we don't have a parameter. We could have easily gone up to that crack, but at least one full tile. It doesn't even match the door trim. I don't know. Like I said, a lot of these jobs that I go on when I critique, it has to do with, you know, did they build the shower correctly? And, you know, is there a lipid and blah, blah, blah. But, God, that one was horrible. Um, there's no, there's no consistency to anything he's doing here. Even, God, look at that. Look at that. Um, yeah, it's a shame. My cut, my customer, the homeowner here has is incredulous because they have rebuilt this twice already, and it's not done right. And now they got to do it a third time and take out all this material. One of these tile is forty-four dollars, so you're looking at over a hundred dollars with just these three, these four that you're looking at. Another hundred dollars, over a hundred dollars over here. And then you can imagine on the floor um, and the tub and all the schluter and all, <laughs> you know, thousands of dollars spent for no reason. That's why I do these videos. Know what you know. You know, you don't know what you don't know until you know what you know. So my videos are put out there to know what you know. Any one of these mistakes, get rid of the guy. Even at the very beginning, as I said, I'm not doing a large for, extra large format tile. But if a guy shows up with a grinder and you don't see one of these rail systems, you don't see an extra large manual cutter, you don't see some of those tools that I just enumerated, he's not the guy for the job. If he does this, he's not the guy for the job. Any one of these things. I really, really wish and I hope and I'm asking for other tile guys to do these anatomy of bad shower jobs because I think the more the word gets out there and the more heads up that homeowners have, the less often I'm going to have to visit these people that, you know, are getting screwed. Um, because I'm the only one, it seems, that, you know, gets called on these or at least, you know, the one, only one that videotapes and, you know, put these out on YouTube for other people's benefit because it doesn't benefit me. You know, it doesn't do me any good to show off my knowledge, you know, like if, if people aren't paying attention, then, you know, what's the point? You know, these people had, these people started watching my videos after all of this, not before. So I'm just, you know, crossing my fingers and hope that people see these videos that I do prior to having anything done and don't get caught in this. Look at this. Where's the transition for this? Huh? There is none. It looks like he used um, dent shield, which is good. That may not, yeah, I think that is dent shield, it's gray on the top. But there's no transition. From the carpet to the tile, there's nothing there. Like, why isn't there something there? And I, I don't know. I don't have answers to all that. Only the, the guy knows that for sure. Um, he's. He would be a good tile guy if he would just do a little research, like it's so easy to do. I have, in my channel, I have a whole community tab where I show time and time and again where homeowners do better work than some of these contractors, so-called contractors, I don't call them that. They're kind of hacks. No, they are hacks. Don't get into a job. Guys, if you're a tile guy or if you're a contractor and you haven't done a job, with a particular product before, don't experiment on people. You know, like don't waste their time and money and aggravation and effort and all that stuff. Don't do that. You know, that's all I have to say. Hey, if you enjoyed that video and you learned something, consider being a Patreon member. Five, ten, fifteen dollars a month would help me greatly produce more videos. I make nothing up from YouTube at all. If you're gonna call me for advice, please. Donate $50 for 30 minutes. My link to my PayPal and my Patreon account is down below. And if you haven't already, 
hit the subscribe button and hit the bell so you get immediate notifications as soon as I post a video. And thank you very much for your support.